Welcome to the GameDev.TV Community Podcast. I'm your host KB, and I would like to introduce you to industry professionals and people who successfully made their path to the video game industry. I hope that you enjoy the podcast and get useful tips that will bring you closer to achieving your dreams. Now, let's get right into the podcast. Welcome to the GameDev.TV Podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. So could you let the fans know a little bit about who you are and we'll go from there? Okay, so my name is Miguel Sanch. I'm um, a video game programmer from Portugal. I work on a Portuguese video game studio called Nerd Monkeys. And um, yeah, I guess that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, awesome. So let's dive deep into what makes you love making games. Was it so? Did you play games when you were younger? Is that like why you making games now, or is there something else that makes you passionate about making games? Well, I guess I guess it's an universal truth, isn't it? I think everyone that works in video games has played games at mm-hmm. some point in their life. Yeah. So, so definitely, when I was younger, I, I played a lot, probably more than I should. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I played a lot, I, I, and it's usually, uh, I think something that was really useful is that I. Of course, I have my favorite genres, but I, I played everything. Like I, I like like a lot of genres. So, which one of your yeah. favorite genres? Well, when I was younger, I really loved RTSs, like strategy games. Um, but with the, the evolution of games, uh, I became a sucker for RPGs. Like mm-hmm. the classic RPGs, Witcher. Oh, The Witcher Three. You play that one? Oh yeah, of course. Such <laughs> a good game. They got so many things right with sure. that game. Empathy, the character development, the fighting, the world building, everything. I was just like, this. How is this so good? Where's this been? Yeah. I was late to the party with that game. Yeah, it's, it really takes us on a journey. You really feel and it's something really good. And as a game developer, it's sometimes hard to, to capture. Is um, the the, the uh, all the ch- the sh- the choices are very meaningful. Mm-hmm. Like every choice you make takes you through a specific path, and you can well you never know if you what you're doing will have a good or a bad ending. It's, I think it's very interesting. So those are my favorite games when you like choices will either impact the ending in a good way or bad way and, and you don't know some games like infamous it happens right away you know you're making a bad choice mm-hmm. and you're gonna get a bad ending but witcher you don't know what the sequence is because there are moments where like serious like throw the snowball at her or tell her to go to like her room and you don't realize that those moments are actually going to affect how the game ends and it's going to happen good or bad and so you just it's more about caring and choosing the decisions that feel right for that character than choosing what you think is the right choice or choosing what you think is the best answer. Because if you actually choose what you thought would be right, it's actually wrong for how the ending is going to be. So uh, Mm -hmm. that would always be my two cents to that game where I was like, I need more games like this where you can help the player understand the choices they make will have consequences and some not the way you thought they would because people are different, characters interact differently. So yeah. And so then, for instance, when like moments like that in games, does that help you get inspiration for making your own game? Like for instance, out of line is that? What what's the story behind out of line? <laughs> That's an interesting question because something uh, about the game that many people really liked and some other people uh, had a bit of thoughts about is that the game doesn't give you like a, a straightforward story. It doesn't tell you, oh, this is the main character and this. Well, when you play the game, you can. You have hints of a story, but there's not a fixed story. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, like like you you play the game and you can have your own interpretation about the story because there's no text, there's no dialogue. Um, oh, all at all, it's just is, you just kind of do things and things will happen, but nobody's really talking. Mm-hmm. That's genius because then it the saves you time, but also it makes for a whole new unique story that you have to kind of think about in your own head. Yeah, something really funny was <laughs> like uh, there were a lot of 
when the game was being was getting these first reviews, I, I was like, I watched some videos, and it was really funny, like watching streamers interacting with their communities and trying to figure out what the story is about. And there are a lot of theories, and it's, it, I think it's a different type of of storytelling, but I think it's interesting, and I think it's way harder. Uh, maybe, well. As a programmer, I have some input, obviously, as part of the team, but um, telling a story through images and and through sound and through narrative, like game design choices, it's it's not an easy task, but I think we, we, did, we did very well. I mean, it looks incredible. The art looks amazing. The character design looks cool. The world's looking unique. It just, just looks like it's, uh, you know... It's something people need to check out. It's a beautiful, challenging 2D puzzle game platform. Mm-hmm. So if it's good to like programming, so when did you start learning programming? Was it something you kind of picked up because you wanted to make mods or is it something just in college? Well, the first time I programmed was probably in high school, but it was, I mean, high school for me, it was more than 10 years ago. And I just, Learned a bit of C++, made a few, a few like lightweight programs. Um, just, I mean, I'm trying to recall now, and I, I never went much further than a simple calculator or a simple database interaction. You know, high school yeah. stuff. You, ne- <laughs> you never do any really. Inter- of course, it depends on the course, but you yeah. never really do any. Pro, it's more like Amazing. fundamental, yeah, like loops, and that's really it. Yeah, basically. So when did you start getting more intense with programming? Was it during college? Is that when you started like studying a lot more? Well, my my area is actually not anything related to computer science. Mm-hmm. My like my university degree, it's 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 everything opposite of computer science. It's oh really uh, languages, yeah. Okay. I, I have a master's degree in in English and German teaching. Nothing to do with... Wow, okay. Really How did you go from, programming. yeah, getting that degree to making games now? Or did you think that degree helped you now make games? Like, I'm curious. Well, I'm a strong believer that all skills that you acquire in everything you do, like, are weapons that you can use in any area. So... I like the way you say that. Even though it's not... Sorry? Well, I like the way you said that again. Say that one more time, because I like to get uh, quotes for episodes, and I think that was perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I, well, I say that um, every skill that you'll learn throughout mm-hmm. your life um, can be transferred to any... can be used as a weapon. Yeah, there we go. In, any, in anything that you do. And, yeah, and, well... Then I started working as a teacher, and I, I, I just the, the when I started learning to to program for games happened there because I I just wasn't feeling fulfilled, you know. It was just it was just my job, and I, I wanted to do to do something that really pulled me in, so. I started actually. I didn't. Uh, I I mostly program and work with Unity, but I, I started working with RPG Maker. I don't know if you've heard about it. Yeah, I've heard about and it. How did you feel about it? You liked it? <laughs> RPG Maker is a funny story because I never did any game with it. I committed the first mistake that every game developer does, which is I I massively overscoped the game. No. Don't make wow! <laughs> Come on, that's a that's a thing oh, out here. We well, would say don't make wow, wow! Don't make the biggest game. <laughs> What's up with these open world games? Yeah, I know. But there was this really cool channel on YouTube that had a lot of plugins that you can use to make like shops and everything. And I I started to com- to compile like a a big design document. I would make like this amazing game. It, it, it's like it's it's a necessary step. I think it's a necessary step everyone needs to take uh, before um, making anything meaningful. Is is making mis- is making this mistake, which is making a huge 
uh, not making failing in making a huge game. And then I lost my enthusiasm, obviously. No, I, that's when worse. I, yeah. Yeah. Because when I started to, to work on it, I was like, oh my God, uh, I'm not getting anything from this. And I just kept uh, postponing and eventually I just installed the software. You but, sold the software? Like, you, you, wow, you were like, we're done. Done with RPG Maker. Yeah, but it, it took a while. It's like, I, I would work on it, then I, it's like I would work every day, then I would work every two days, and then just once a week, and and um, then I just stopped completely, and eventually I just gave up on it. But um, yeah. So for the people, with RPG maker, uh, sorry, Robert. I was gonna say so that I think feel like that situation you had happens to a lot of people. Like you, you work mm-hmm. with an engine, maybe Unreal Four, and it crashes, and you worked on stuff for like two two hours, and now it's gone, and then you kind of do it again the next day, and then the whole thing crashes, and it doesn't load, and you're like, well, I want to give up on that project, and then you're frustrated because you're constantly like fighting the software, fighting the stuff that you don't even get to learn. And then like well, you said, like, two weeks will go by, like a couple of days, and then you only work on it twice a week, and then the next week will come by, and next week, and then you get six months, and it's like, where's your game? And you're like, I don't know. So how do you like keep yourself from getting demotivated? Like, or how did you get, make, like, get the courage to say, I'm going to quit this, do something else, instead of saying, oh, I'm never going to give up? Well, I think that the first the basic step is making a game. Like a game, like a small, the smallest game you can think of. I think my, the first game I made was Pong. You know, the old, like those, that old game Pong. Mm-hmm. And from Pong, I did one a bigger game. And I, I went from there. It's just... The mo- just slowly get bigger. Don't make WoW first. Yeah. Make the Pong game, then make like Pac-Man then make like Galaga and then make like Super Mario World and then we'll get to like the 3D Mario Kart or, or and then eventually we can get to like these giant RPG just movie like games like God of War and Uncharted. Exactly. And, so yeah. Because so, so if you're losing because when you're losing motivation you can think oh but wait I made this game before I, I made the game before maybe I just need to push a, a little more and maybe I can finish this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, also another mistake that um, maybe people do is trying to make a big game. Um, even if you have experience, sometimes you can just start. Maybe you are the best programmer in the world and you're the best game designer. Well, if you're the best game designer, you probably won't do what I'm going to say, but. Um, you, you can try to make a big game, but sometimes it's it's good to do just like a prototype and have people play it. Because if it's if it's not good or if it's not uh, I don't know if it's not fun to play, there's no point in continuing making it. I mean, there's some points. Sometimes, well, some games are just learning experiences, of course, and that's that's there's always something to take from it, but. If you want to make like a successful game, a game that people enjoy playing, sometimes like a small 30 minutes experience is all that it takes. And from there, you can, you know, if it's worth uh, pushing more or not. Oh, yeah. You got, you got to basically have a plan and then like execute it, see how it's going to take as long as it's going to need to. And if it's going to take longer, decide, hey, maybe I can scope things out. Maybe my game's too big. Maybe I'm making it too hard on myself. Because mm-hmm. you have to keep going. So if you do something too hard and you don't finish it, what was the point? Now you could, another thing too, is if you do want to do a big project, but make it like super small, the different features. So let's say you want to make an RPG and like start with like one random like house or whatever, and then just be able to get the character to move around it then be able to pick up things and then add like a small quest where you pick up things. And then like after a month of doing this, then yeah, like add another house and another area, add different characters. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you can have an RPG. It's going to take longer, but at least you get the small wins 
that help you learn. Yeah. That way, because if exactly. you learn how to do that, then you can go to an outer world. Um, so we do this thing called artifacts for our finish it course or, or no get a job course, where it's the goal is to, let's say you wanted to go work for Obsidian and you want to make outer worlds. Well, then, yeah, make like an outer worlds level, have the gameplay kind of work like the game, make it look like what they will need, and then go to them mm-hmm. and say, hey, I can already make your game. I can already make the quest that you make. I can already make the character shoot like you guys do. They're going to be like, oh, you already basically know what to do. Then come work for us and then just keep doing what you're doing. So that's the whole idea of like artifacts. It's just like go learn something, do it really small, make it look like the game they're making. And they're like, hey, we'll hire you. Yeah, so, just you, you, you show commitment and you distinguish yourself from from other potential uh, mm-hmm. people that are applying for that job. That's, exactly. That's, uh, and uh, so, yeah, what's exactly. your experience with getting a job in the industry? Is it? Do you have any like tips for anybody like who haven't done any interviews yet? Well, um, I think a portfolio is like essential. Having some place where you can show your work, um, like have, I would say, when I say good games on your portfolio, I don't mean like uh, uh, were the winning games, but games that are polished. So it might be like a ten-minute game, but it, it it looks polished. It doesn't look like something that you just picked up a, a bunch of assets from the from the asset store and put them together and have a, a character move around. Just like you don't need, uh, sometimes we programmers have difficulty with this, which is like uh, polishing the visual aspect of games. But like if you if you dedicate some, some time and polish the games that you include in your portfolio, that's going to impress the, the employer portfolio. And then just, you know, just, a resume and just start applying to jobs and mm-hmm. fly, look for opportunities and apply for internships. Um, do spontaneous uh, applications. Don't wait for for like the the, the your dream. Yeah, don't wait for your dream. Your dream. Make your dream come to you. Go build it. When you're building a network. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh no! So I think you froze for a second. So then I started saying something. Oh, but we're good now. I can hear okay. you fine. Okay. Yeah, but it's basically that. It's like talk to people, mm-hmm. apply, uh, do spontaneous applications, and show interest. So many studios now have Discord channels, like start interacting with the community. Show show some of your work. Don't be afraid of being judged if. Obviously, no one is going to do a. No one does like AAA quality stuff when they're beginning, and no one expects you to. Don't be afraid to to show what you've got. And yeah, that's. I like that one. Don't be afraid to show you got, because it is hard when you have industry leaders making this incredible work. Some people, solo creators, doing insane levels of work and you look at them and you're like how but then you also have to look at some of these people it's just their whole life like if you analyze what you do every day you'd be like oh of course i'm not that good but this person probably spends hours and hours and that's all they do and that's what they love and that's why they can create something insane and like someone else said that was on their podcast it's not that they're better than you they just put more hours Mm -hmm. so that's it i think i think the only person you need to compete against uh, like when you think about those things is yourself like you need to to think next month i need to be better than than what i am this month and in alpha near i need to be better than i am now so i think we don't need to compare ourselves to the greatest programmer or the greatest game designer or the greatest artist in the world we, don't. we need to compare ourselves to ourselves in the past exactly we need to we need to build our confidence from there. No, it's and it's so true. We're... Because yeah. I I noticed that like especially when I started my journey and I was very naive about things. So I was always just like, Oh, these people can do it and like I can learn it in three months. And I don't know where that came from, but it's just not true. Like if you really want to do something great, you have to put in time and effort and a lot of effort into it. And you have to learn how you work. 
So I started to mm -hmm. listen to this one guy on YouTube and I found out that his way of learning is by doing more than less. And so I realized that worked for me because it got to a point where I started to just study, like focus on single things instead of doing a lot like I used to. And I actually got less done, which is interesting. So it's like, I guess my brain and like the other guy I met, like, too, like we want to do too many things. So if you do like one or two things a week, so like have Monday do this and Tuesday do that and Monday do the other thing and Tuesday, you actually get more done as long as you're consistent. And so find out how yeah. you learn. Don't rush it. It, it might take you a couple sure. weeks. And at the end, maybe a couple weeks of just doing two hours once a week. And then eventually you'll have something done and you're like, oh, wow, it didn't take me that long. It's like, yeah, you don't have to put 24 hours in one day and then get burnt out and not work for the rest of the week. You won't learn as much. You'll forget it, but it'll be next week. It's like slow, steady commitment. You have a lot of time. If anybody's telling you don't have a lot of time, I don't know who's talk, telling you that, but you have a lot of time. Take time to learn things. Take time to yeah. deeply like research. Agreed. Take time to deeply analyze, understand things. What tips do you give to people who feel like they're just, like, studying isn't getting them anywhere? And what have you dealt with to like help, you know, get through the dark days? Well, there's this expression called the, the tutorial hell. I don't know if you've heard of yes. it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, I think that avoid tutorial hell at all costs. So don't don't expect to watch a bunch of tutorials and um, like you're already ready to use those tools at maximum efficiency. Um, sometimes. You need to watch some tutorials, but do some experimentation yourself. Um, and sometimes things start to make sense by themselves. If, you, if you're trying alone to learn things without watching anything, um, how can I say that this in a better way? Uh, like you watch a tutorial to make a character move around and jump and shoot. And and then you implement that on your game, and maybe you, you want to to learn to make your character duck. And instead of, of searching for a tutorial of, of how to make your character duck, maybe you can, from what you know, from moving and jumping, maybe you can extend that and make your character duck by yourself. And that's like a learning experience on itself. And when you, well, it's, so if the character moves, by using this method A, and if I jump using this method C, uh, B, maybe if I implement this method C here, I can make that because make the character that because it's the same process. And then when it finally works, you just feel like, damn, what's the limit now? It's I like can <laughs> keep adding features, and well, that's a bit of a, a trap because if you keep having features and features and features. But that's also part of the learning experience. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, it's like, I love that. You're like, what's next? Because once you start to finally grasp it, I think that's the trouble too. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, sometimes people can understand it, but then they can't implement it. Or some people can implement it, but they don't actually understand what they're doing. And then once you get it, you're like, oh, if you just add this together and this together and worry about maybe memory for C++. And then if I do this right, it'll be good. And then you try it and it works. And there's no memory leaks. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I understand now. And it's like, okay, <laughs> now I just got to go and follow different equations. I just think we get in our own way as like students and as people. Yeah. Or like you get this tutorial hell where you follow the tutorial and you're like, the tutorial is going to teach me everything I need to know. I don't even have to think about it. Just do it. And then you get to the challenges and you're like, eh, I'll do it later. Or I don't really want to think about it. I think it's just being lazy. Don't, don't be lazy in the small things. I've noticed that when it comes yeah, to studying. Sure. Like when it says do a challenge, do it. When it says read this, do it. Highlight this, memorize this, practice it. Like those little small things, you're like, I don't really need to do it right now. When are you going to do it? If you don't do it now, you probably won't do it later. And if you do it later, you might rush it. Just, just do it now and take your time. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're talking about game dev TV videos, specifically with the, with the challenges. Yes. But, that's uh, <laughs> but also like textbook challenges uh, and stuff. Ah, okay, okay. But yeah, like we spent... Well, I could go on, since I'm a former teacher, I could go on and speak like bad things about the educational system. But I'll just say one thing, like I think like kids are overwhelmed with homework and things to do at least in my country. And like those challenges are nothing. And, and they're really 
like there's no point in skipping those challenges. Yeah. Something that I sometimes also do is, uh, but that depends on my enthusiasm with the video that I'm watching. Is like I don't know Rick or or Sam saying something like, okay, now we're going to implement X feature, but they don't give us a, a challenge. And sometimes something that uh, I do because I still do some. Uh, well, my learning journey is mm -hmm. not over, and it will never be. Oh, it's um, never over, especially in game development. No, no, no. it never ends. Yeah. Uh, something that I do, I, I post the video and I try to implement the thing that they're saying that we are going to implement. But even if they don't give me the challenge, sometimes I post the video and try to implement it mm. um, before they, they do it. And then, yeah, it, it's basically a, a self challenge. And I think that's also very useful. Because sometimes you're watching the video, and, and I, I'm sure this happens to a lot of people. You're watching the video, and you think like, um, think they say, okay, we're going to implement X this feature, and you're thinking, okay, this is not a challenge, but I know exactly what they're going to do, and I'm just going to watch. No, if you know exactly how they are going to do it, just pause the video and do it yourself, and then yeah, you can see, see if you're exactly. right, if you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know if they made all the videos filled, pausing to this with like 10 challenges each video, that would be absolutely, well, that would not be good. But sometimes you can set the challenges yourself and try to accomplish things yourself. No, I, I agree 100%. I think yeah. that part was exactly what I meant by being lazy. So like, yeah, you know, I do a bit, I'm just going to watch it. It's like, so is that all you're doing? Just watching stuff? Like, don't you want to actually do it? Go in there and think about it. Figure out the problem. Mm -hmm. Solve the problem. Like you're gonna have to do that anyway. So why delay that gratification? That's like that's why it's not okay to like cheat when it comes to programming or game dev or like skipping things because you need to know it. It's not like some like retail job where if you can or like food industry where you can don't have to learn about the stuff, but you can just find the answer on a on a computer to ring in their food it's like you actually have to build this stuff and nobody really is going to give you the answer mm -hmm. especially when you make something good like if i can triple a you can make something generic and it's going to be generic and probably get like okay reviews as a game if you just copy and paste a lot of things or you just place assets but there's also nothing wrong with that especially if you're a beginner because you want to learn things but you have to come to a point where you get comfortable going beyond your comfort zone which i can i'm an experience to realize like i've been just like being lazy Oh, I didn't do the challenge because I was just tired. I just didn't want to work. I just wanted to watch these videos. Mm. And at the end of the day, they say, oh, I made this. But it's like, you know how to do it? And I'm like, ah, oh, no. So, yeah. But how do you keep yourself from, like, yeah. saying no to doing those challenges? Like, how do you go from, like, oh, I'm not going to do it to doing it? Because there's got to be days when you're like, oh, I'll just watch it. Like, how do you fall, stop from falling down this path of justification? Like, oh, I, gotta, I, I worked hard today. I don't need to do the challenge today. And then you slowly start saying that to every challenge. How do you avoid that? I don't know. I think, I think I never felt that. Because if I don't feel like doing the challenge, I just close the video. And then when I pick up, I have to do the challenge. I, like I, I stop oh. myself from skipping the challenge. I don't want to do the challenge. Well, it's like I've been punishing myself. Well, you don't want to do the challenge, then no more, no more, yeah, no more videos for yourself. Just wow, I never thought about that. Okay. It's like, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it makes sense. It's I mean, like, you yeah, don't do it. Happens sometimes. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's something really small, and you can do it, but sometimes it takes a lot of work. Like for example, you say, okay, then do this. The challenges make. Um. Make this particle system your own thing. Like customize it for yourself. Like make customize it uh, and share it with the community. And customizing a particle system sometimes takes a lot of work because there's no easy answer. There's a lot of try and like making some part, some uh, VFX like pretty and you have to tune a lot of stuff. Sometimes it takes a while. So if I don't feel like doing it, doing it, I don't do it. But I close the video and when I come back. I can go from there before I do it. Yeah, then no, that's a good that's a good answer. You just close the video. Just like oh, oh, I'll come back to it later. Yeah. That's maybe it. So that's what I'm I think the problem is we think we're supposed to enjoy something like 24/7 we're supposed to you know do it. 
or whatever. Um, but no, it's just like, hey, you didn't want to do it. Stop it. Go do something else. Come back an hour later and do it. Or do it when you feel like it. At least as long as you do it that day. Or maybe not. Maybe do it next day. Whatever works for you. Like, you have to figure out what works. But don't burn yourself out. Don't make you hate it. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's, it's a bit of a temp- temptation. Yeah. Um, especially on the on the first well when we start learning something new want to spend all the time doing that but we can get burned and uh, like you said before it sometimes it's better to, to have this set of two hours per day dedicated to that and then go rest go watch a, a film go be with some friends well friends now are a bit with the whole world situation is a bit hard but just Go, go relax, basically. Exactly. Go relax, and you'll be surprised how much more energy you'll have when you come back. And when you sleep you know, more, relax more, things will get more solidified in your brain. That way you don't have to be like, oh, I forgot. Because that's the worst way to study. Plenty of sleep. I, I got, I got um, plenty of solutions that I found for my problems. For example, sometimes I spend the morning trying to solve a bug or trying to do something and I, I can't quite figure figure it out why. And then it's lunchtime, I go walk the dog outside and as I'm walking with the dog, the solution comes like, and it's usually something very simple. And when I get away from the computer, when I stop looking at the, the code and everything and I'm just walking the dog and looking at the, at, to the horizon or something, the solution just comes like that. Sometimes it's just to distance yourself from things, and it, and it helps. It it really helps. No, that's wow. I mean, the the um, whole distancing yeah. thing does. I, it's surprising how it works. You would think that like spending more time on a problem should help you learn it more or like figure out the solution, but no, it's really getting away that your brain is like, huh, mm-hmm. I see the solution. It's just so weird to think that, like, just by getting away, not thinking about it, your brain's like, let me think about it unconsciously. It's like, what? I mean, there, there probably is a, a psychology reason for that, of how our brain works. So, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's probably. Uh, I, there was a, I, I once saw advice, I'm not sure what it was, but it's while you're working, keep, keep a bottle of water around you. Mm-hmm. And if you keep drinking water, you keep having to make stops, uh, pauses to, to go to the bathroom. And just that minute where you go to the bathroom, sometimes is enough for you to arrive to the, of the solution to the problem. You arrive wow. at the solution to the problem, just going, going to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're also being healthy too. You're getting enough water. You, you're getting up and True. walking a little bit. True. That sounds like great advice. Who would have thought? But no, I mean, that, that works really well because you have to get up and you have to like, think for a little bit. You have to walk to the bathroom, do your thing. So, yeah, you never know. And it also just gets you out of your, maybe you are tired, right? You just fall asleep and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I got to go to the bathroom. And it wakes you up. That's another thing, too. Do you ever feel yeah. like, do you, do you ever make sacrifices when studying? Do you ever feel like you're studying too much? What was it like studying programming and like studying like your degree with English and stuff and the German stuff? Well, when I was teaching um, at, at, at a certain point, it was basically when I started learning um, game programming. Um, I was just tutoring some kids in English and German, and it was just some hours. Mm-hmm. So I could, I, could learn, um, I could learn programming on those hours. But I had a rule, which was like, I was trying to simulate um, a nine to, uh, nine to five job, you know? Mm-hmm. So either I was tutoring kids or I was on the computer learning new things or making games. I never went beyond five or six. Beyond five or six, I, I would, yeah, force myself to stop and then I, I would rest. And well, now I'm working as a full-time, Sometimes after dinner, I watch some videos and maybe it's a bit too <laughs> Just much. To keep but... yourself with the new technology. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. so, what is that and like now as well as a full-time developer? Oh, it's it's amazing. 
some like the 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 most important things that I learned was that uh, like I mean I learned a lot from from programming from like more experienced programmers obviously but I started to get a sense of of uh, the artistic side because so well I'm good at programming I'm not good at art and when I watch artists at work and the, when I can talk about what what they should put in, in the game and and why they should do it, um, I start to think, oh God, yeah, you're right. That that makes sense. That game I did alone when I had no experience, it was awful. With that my portfolio is awful. My portfolio, oh my God, uh, is my it portfolio that, is no, it can't be that bad. What are you talking about? <laughs> God damn it! It's it's. Oh, why is this? I don't know if I can swear on you. No, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, the design, the design part that there's this whole science of design where things should be put to, to be easy for the eyes to read and to direct the attention. I had zero notion about that. And, and I learned, I really learned a lot with, you really learn a lot in a team. It's like amazing, really. What, did you, what were some of like, the biggest takeaways you had from working in a team? Hmm. Um, like it was in what sense? Like uh, uh, it, lessons, or like what's important while working on a team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, communication is essential, obviously. Yeah, communication is essential. Yeah, I think that's actually I think that's the the, the most important part of it, and especially now that everyone is working remotely, like. Making sure everyone in the team is on the same page, and we're working. We're all working towards the same goal. I think it's. it's it must be harder for team leads now to do that, to keep everyone like in line and doing the same thing and be motivated when they can't see each other or they can't like. Everybody's just like different time zones or different things and this and that. It must be so hard. <laughs> yeah. Do Do you think there's we're, any advice for people mostly... managing teams like that? Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Then a good thing about game development that's easier. It's usually people that are in game development are all they all love what they're doing. They they usually not like having this job to pay the rent. Um, especially programmers because of like there are way more um, lucrative jobs in, in programming than, than game development, at least in, in my country. And that's a plus that makes easier to manage things for, for producers, for example. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I started working, which is, was like one year ago, a bit more, so it was already remote. But people tell me that the chemistry is different. Like we do, we use, we mostly use Discord and, um, we I love this chord. We talk. We have, yeah, <laughs> we have meetings and we talk about things. But like going to lunch together and talk about the ideas and it's it's different. The bonds that you that you make with people is different. And yeah, but um, but re working remotely also has its advantages. So mm -hmm. that was really nice now because people can live now wherever they want. People can not have to waste money on gas and people can be closer to friends and family. True. So, yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's only like, like, I guess one of the light things that happened in 2020 was the remote work has made people have different lives. Some people now like lives have completely changed because of it. They don't worry about going out anymore. They don't like people are saving money on like makeup and food and gas and all that stuff. Yeah. it's interesting it's just you know, like some, yeah it's like one little thing it's completely changed someone's entire life but it's also really cool because yeah. people can travel now and still be like working and they, just as long as they have wi-fi they can do it so becoming nomads we're, we're traveling the world more and more yeah i thought it's important to um, i think it's important to keep a, a routine a good routine no, yeah, that's a one key thing. How if you don't have routine, yeah. you can slip and get comfortable and lazy. 
That's the hard part about staying home all the time. And you also have to, you know, distinguish when is this is my workspace and this is where I relax. Because otherwise, you just feel like you're yeah. constantly working. True. So, what's it like mm-hmm. working? So, you work for not Nerd Monkeys, right? Mm-hmm. So, what's it like working for Nerd Monkeys? And like, what what's the process like? What's the day in the life of Miguel? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Well, I was your hello. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the video is a bit laggy, but we have some. Um, Well, I wake up. I have my breakfast. I think it's it's good to have like a a good breakfast, and then I just sit. We have this channel on Discord where everyone says good morning. And then we we talk. Either we have already tasks from the day before or from the week, or we talk with our team and our uh, our producer tells us. Usually on, on Monday there's there's this this meeting where we establish the uh, the objectives for the week, and then we we start working. And, Sometimes we, we stay on Discord and we talk while we're working. So we're 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 working, but we're on, it's like we're in the same room. Sometimes no one talks; we're just there working. And then someone, yeah, it's like simulating a, a real office, basically. Um. So yeah, that's that's the day today. And then we have on usually on Fridays we have this uh, morning meeting with the whole studio where we talk about you know about the week and about random stuff like a bit of a social uh, socializing moments which is also important but we try to keep like the most um, we try to keep active on on discord so people don't feel isolated in their homes like everyone is encouraged to, to to join the channel of their team and work there even if you have nothing to say just be there and listen to, to others and learn from others and yeah no it's awesome sounds like a really nice place yeah. to work at and i was wondering if you felt like there was anything that you were surprised about working there like for instance people might not realize that maybe working in a studio is harder than it is when you're like working alone or maybe it's easier i don't know if there's just something that like stood out to you from working at the studio hmm But uh, can you repeat the question, like, compared to what? So is just there anything that, like, shocked you when, like, moving from, like, studying at home to actually working at a studio? Like, maybe you had to, like, communicate more, maybe because you used to work on, like, solo devving, or maybe they took uh, breaks more seriously. Or it's just, like, something where it's, like, you're not, you wouldn't know unless you work at a studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know because I never worked with the studio. But I think this, there would be more interaction, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and and probably the 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 I don't know the, the schedules. We have like a flexible schedule, and we don't have like a time to to. To start working, but usually everyone works around the same hours. But probably in a studio, if you are depend, but this is like a, an obvious reason. If you're dependent on transportation or something, you probably would have a more strict schedule. Yeah. If you're depending on, on the bus or, or something. Um, yeah, and the chemistry. Yeah, the chem- I think the chemistry would be different. But sometimes, uh, well, when the game launched, which was like almost two months ago, we did like a, a small pre-launch party. No way, Wisbon, really? Which is where, the, which is where the, yeah, where the, where the studio is located. So we just joined there, had some pizzas, had some, and some drinks and just like, like a, a social meeting. I love that. Coming together, celebrating the game, just, you know, yeah, working as a studio. I like that. And, you know, 
Portugal is a small country. You can cross Portugal from one side to the other in like four hours. Uh, well, maybe a bit more, but but it's, it's really easy. I, I live like two hours from Lisbon. It was like like a short trip just for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And so is there, what advice would you give anybody who wants to get where you are today? Should they like, should they focus on the same route you took or should they just like study new ways of doing technology to stay ahead of the times now to get where you are? Because it's competition is getting like mm. harder as time goes on. So what advice would you give to maybe your younger self today? Well, work hard. That's my my advice. Like, um, be, be be demanding with yourself. I think this is the, the, Ooh, the most important thing. Like, demand for don't like burn yourself out. Don't uh, like establish expectations that you can fulfill. But be demanding with yourself with yourself, and then. Just, I mean, I think that the hardest thing is, is to get an opportunity. So I think, yeah, I think the hardest thing is getting an opportunity uh, because, well, like you said, there's a lot of competition. But once you and once you get the opportunity, like show, show that you care, show that you care about what you're doing. Don't just, don't just like. I mean, it's, I feel that sometimes people that come from schools, um, like they don't, they don't have the, the the worker mindset. They're just trying to get a grade because it's an internship, or they just used to school and they're just doing like the the minimum to to pass. But here, there there is no passing. There is no no one is going to grade you for your work. Um, so you have to 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 work to work to how can I explain this to make yourself be seen like to be a, a part of the company and to make to make things to be a it's it's a creative industry so you need to yeah I miss I know what I want to say but I'm just missing the words it's like uh, if you want to be successful, you just have to work hard and prove that that you're a you're a um, ah, gosh, I'm missing the word. You're a, a good part of the company. You're you're an advantage for the company. You're an advantage for the studio. You'll help the stu the studio go go beyond and further. Um, so yeah. But yeah, to get to where I am, like the hardest part is really getting the opportunity. And to get the opportunity is really make some good games, participate in some uh, game jams, make some polished, great games, like small, don't need to be huge. Learn, learn a lot, learn from your mistakes, absolutely learn from your mistakes. Like some, something really interesting that I found in game jams is, is like that usually more people um comments on your game so you can learn what you did wrong what you did right and just build a portfolio and be respectful and this is this is a very big part of it because unfortunately this industry is a bit under uh, under a, a certain edges. yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's some people that uh, uh, so people didn't get the the proper education, but um, yeah, just be respectful, be hardworking, and make great things, and strive to to learn and to improve every day. Wow, that was beautiful. That, I don't think there's any other way to end the episode than with that. So yeah, with that, <laughs> I'm gonna actually just ask you for the challenge that you should give at the end of the uh, episode, okay. so that the listeners can go out there and uh, get going with their game development journey and not stay complacent and lazy like me. So <laughs> what advice, what challenge would you well, give us? Well, my challenge is more of an internal challenge to think about. Okay. But since I, 
since I graduated in in the English language, which from my way of talking before, it's not that good anymore. But uh, so something that I did when I started was was correcting emails, and no one asked me to do this. But like people from the studio started asking me to, to do like a grammar check or 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 hey Miguel can you can you do a grammar check and it, it's it's what I was talking about the, at the beginning it's like every skill that you learn can be useful and you can apply them in in your in your in your life so my challenge is exactly this maybe you're trying to get in game development but you probably have you probably have um, experience from other areas before and think about other skills that you have what, how can they be useful in, in game development like maybe you work well the, the the job that people usually mock is, is working at mcdonald's i don't know i never understood why because yeah. working in mcdonald's maybe you you get team skills in mcdonald's uh, working by working in mcdonald's Maybe there's something by working in McDonald's that you can bring into game development. Probably, most definitely, there is. Wow, um, you, just, you just like so, left the spirit of many people's uh, days today because of that. They're working at McDonald's, and like you're right, I am doing something that can help me later in life, which it is. Hey, you're right. any fast food place if you can survive, especially if it's just really busy, you're set off for life. Don't care what anybody says if you're making yeah. money. And you're supporting yourself, your family, whatever. You're doing good. So no, that's not a low life mm -hmm. job. There's all you know. It's, it's a job like anything else. Yeah, and if I may, a secondary challenge is if you're not interested interested in getting into game development, but you're taking, but you're learning game development. Maybe game development gives you skills for your job, like that's like true. the inverse situation. Yeah. Like you're learning game development, and maybe hmm. it gives you, it helps you with other parts of your life. Beautiful. That was a really yeah. good challenge. That that was a philosophical, uh, super like deep thought, and plus a challenge at the same time, <laughs> and like a way to change you. <laughs> you're like, oh, well, let's just think about things like this. And I'm like, wow, okay, woo, you're right. Let's step it up. Yeah. Let's, let's be better. But no, yeah, great. great and challenge. sometimes the what we talked about. Uh, distinguishing yourself from others, mm, maybe that's that's that's, that's, um, that's a key, like a, a key part, like the, the other jobs that you have, the, the skills that no one ha has in game development. Maybe they can help you distinguish yourself from from others. Exactly. Oh, cool. well, awesome! Thank you for coming on, Miguel. It's been a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Thank you. Got me inspired to do this amazing challenge. <laughs> wait to go out there yes. make my dreams come true but no seriously thank you for coming on and yes. i'd like to end off the thank podcast you. by handing a mic Love to you to do any last minute shout outs tips thing uh quotes whatever you want to end us off with the mic's all yours and thank you for coming on yeah thank you uh, it was a pleasure to be here and it's just like a shout out for my for my team at nerd monkeys and everyone at nerd monkeys and my family and friends, obviously. And for everyone that is learning, just keep doing it. I wasn't, <laughs> I'm going to exaggerate a bit, but I was a nobody like one year, uh, one year ago. I never expected to be where I am, but I just kept pushing and here I am. So don't lose motivation and you'll do great. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening. You can find all courses at gamedev.tv or in the show notes at a discounted price. Get started with your game development journey today.